Hello, welcome to Crypt Point Awareness Channel. My name is Sayyad and today I want to talk about RAM and RAM trading. But please first look at the disclaimer and remember that this is an awareness channel. Let's now talk about RAM and the RAM trading. In the EOS ecosystem, you need three resources to do anything in the network. If you want to do any transaction in the network, then you need these three resources. You need CPU resources, you need network bandwidth, and then you need RAM. Now, there is no trading about CPU resources and network bandwidth. You can simply stake them. But in the case of RAM, the system allows RAM trading and it has been introduced recently in the last stages of the code development. And this is a very strange thing. In my viewpoint, it is really a wrong thing to do any kind of RAM trading. It is not ethical to introduce RAM trading in the system because we do not have CPU trading, we do not have bandwidth trading. Why do we need RAM trading? There should have been some better way, but it has not been handled properly. I am thinking that it was a mistake to introduce RAM trading. Now, from where this RAM comes from, you may be thinking why the limit of the RAM is 64 gigabyte and from where the RAM comes from. Now it may look strange, but these RAM resources, they come from the physical RAM provided by the network. The top 21 block producers, they have to agree with the minimum level of RAM resources that each and every node should have. Today, these block producers, they have agreed that the minimum RAM that every node in the mainnet should have is 64 gigabyte. So now every node in the mainnet, and I mean every node from the 21 block producers, whether it is a full node or whether it is a block producer node, these all nodes have 64 gigabyte of physical RAM, and then they can provide this RAM to the rest of the US community. Now, this is a huge conflict of interest that these block producers, first, they are the responsible to provide these RAM resources to the rest of the US community. But what they are doing, they are involved in the market manipulation. Yes, this is purely market manipulation that they are first providing these resources to the rest of the community but before the community can do anything they themselves buy these resources yes who are buying these ram resources it it's not the rest of the community that is buying these ram resources most of the people most of the token holders they don't know how to buy ram resources now there exist some tools that ordinary person can use those tools and buy RAM resources but three four weeks back in the beginning ordinary people did not know how to buy these RAM resources they did not have the ability to buy RAM resources only the block producers and some of the developers they have the knowledge to buy RAM resources a couple of weeks back only the developers and these block producers they had the resources to buy RAM and to be involved in RAM trading. You needed to have access to the main net. You needed to build your own node and then you needed to join the main net. And then via the command line interface, you could buy and sell RAM. Who had that knowledge? It's only the block producers and some developers. And who are responsible to provide this RAM to the rest of the world? It's the block producers. So this is pure manipulation that the block producers, and I am only talking about the first 21 block producers. 
the top 21 block producers. They are the responsible ones to provide the RAM resources to rest of the community. But what they did, they bought these resources themselves instead of providing to the rest of the world. And then, and then the rest of the world has to buy those resources from these block producers with 20 times higher prices. What is going on? I mean, people who are outside from the EOS community, they will call this like a scam, the biggest scam in the history of mankind. And it is conflict of interest. The block producers should never be allowed to be involved in the RAM trading because if you allow them to be involved in the RAM trading, then two things will happen. You can never fix the RAM problem because even if you increase the RAM resources in the network from 64 gigabyte to 10 times more, let's say 1000 gigabyte, these block producers, they will buy back all the RAM. They have all the resources. The top 21 block producers, they are earning 10,000 US dollar per day every day. They have a lot of power and influence and money. They will buy all the RAM resources that the network provides. And then they will tell the rest of the community, okay, buy this RAM from them, buy this RAM from them on 20 times higher prices. So you can never fix the RAM problem even by increasing the RAM if you allow RAM trading by the block producers. The second thing that these block producers will achieve that nobody is talking about that if the minimum level of RAM that is required by each node will be increased from 64 gigabyte to let's say 128 gigabyte then what will happen then the block producers that are in the low rank they will just die away they will not be able to support the high level of RAM because they don't have any resources they are not earning ten thousand dollar every day they are earning zero dollar every day so what they will achieve what these 21 block producers are going to achieve from this ram trading they are going to achieve two things first they will themselves become rich second they will make the entry barrier so hard for the other block producers that they will never make it so this is centralization. This is a big hole in the system. I think the whole RAM problem needs redesigning, rethinking. Otherwise, I don't know what's going to happen with the EOS. In the real world, this is called market manipulation. It is called crime. This is, this is a big crime. And if an ordinary company does this kind of crime, uh, their business will be banned. Their business will be banned. They will be stopped. I think you as a EOS token holder has to play a big role here. When you are casting your vote, you really have to spend time. You really have to think about it to whom you should give vote. There are 400 block producers. Don't just look in the top of the list and vote them blindly. They are not on the top of list because they have a very good network or they have very good knowledge or they even have a, a good security background. So as an EOS token holder, when you are going to cast your vote, please go through all of these 400 block producers look into their websites look into their team members read their cvs read their linkedin profiles and then you cast vote now i know one block producer from sweden is sweden core net sweden core net yes this is the website for the sweden core net they are not involved in the RAM trading at all. 
and there may be other block producers in the bottom rank that are not involved in the RAM trading. So please choose them, give them vote. I also think that it has to be rethought and there should be rethinking about how the RAM should be handled. Maybe we need redesigning. Maybe we need to redesign the whole RAM management because we don't trade CPU resources, we don't trade network bandwidth. Why we have to trade RAM? I think this was probably a loophole created into the system, maybe intentionally. So this loophole should be closed. So this is all I wanted to talk about it. Maybe we will have more discussion about this in the future. Please join Crypt Point Awareness channel. We will be making these kind of videos in the future in order to ensure that the US community understand what's going on, why the RAM prices are increasing, why this market manipulation is happening and there are many more things. So please join us, please join the channel and see you next time. Bye bye.